Okay, so once all the teeth are set up, we now need to contour the um, waxwork to create the polished surfaces of the dentures. You can see there that we've got the, uh, the guidance set up nicely. And I've been round and I've already sealed the teeth in with a hot wax knife. And now what we're doing is just adding some wax around the necks of the teeth and this will give us uh, a little bit of room for some carving to create a nice shape around uh, the cervical margin to give us some uh, gingiver. Yeah, it's easier to carve it back, isn't it, than trying to add it on um, all the time. Just um, the state of the model that you're working on, um, is that wet or dry or have you taken any interest in that? No, it's, all, it's just a dry model mm -hmm. so far, there's nothing been done to it as yet. Adding some wax up at the top to cover up all the uh, acrylic base, smoothing it out around the back. Yeah, this is a slightly odd thing, isn't it? That that the denture doesn't need to come off that model anymore. No. So you don't need to worry about uh, sticking it down. In the palatal aspect, then what you're looking to do is just create a nice smooth um, transition between the teeth and the polished surface so that the patient hasn't got anything that's going to irritate the tongue or anything for them to play with. I work all the way around adding the wax to start with and then it can be getting nice and cold and then we can look at carving the wax to shape and this is an ash 5 I'm using here. So around the posterior teeth what we're doing is just smoothing it out making a nice transition between the border and the teeth nice and smooth and just shaping it so that the cheeks can rest against the denture and aid the retention keeping it in place yeah for muscle retention you've got the slight concave sort of line running sort of um, uh, along the line of the denture don't you yes yeah. anterior and posterior yeah. really and then so there's not much detail at the back it's just creating that concavity and then as you come forward, what we try to do is get a little bit of shape around the anterior teeth, just to show where the roots of the teeth would be. So the way I go about it, I draw a line in between each of the teeth, and I draw it at a slight angle above the lateral, because that's the way the tooth's going to go. And then I start at the, on top of the root, and I carve down into the line. So I'm carving sort of down into a valley, if you like. There's going to be a valley in between each, each root. So starting at the top, cutting down to the line, and then that's just creating that rounded surface around the root of the canine. And then I'll just get rid of some of the some of the material that's gathered. And then to create the next part, we're starting at the line and sort of cutting up, if you like, onto the ridge above the lateral root. And it wants to be more pronounced near the tooth and less pronounced as you go up, so it looks like the roots disappearing into the uh, alveolar ridge. When you're doing the um, the lateral, um, if you can, if you take a little bit more away on that, that that makes the canine prominence look bulkier, doesn't it? That's right. So um, you can, by subtracting from the lateral area, you can make the canine prominence look bulkier without making the denture any bulkier. It's a trick of the eye thing. No, so you're keeping the knife moving quite freely there because if you just get stuck in one groove you do get a washboard effect don't you that sort of puts ridges into the denture yeah you don't want to take, try and take too much off at no. once just small amounts and if, if you do it small amounts at a time you'll find that there's not much finishing of the wax to do either it'll be nice and smooth and you'll just have to give it a wipe with a piece of tissue some people spend ages with lemon oil trying to smooth the wax surface out and with uh, little flames and things but um, if you just uh, go a bit carefully at this stage try not to dig your blade in and it should look you, you can see from what you're doing there that the wax coming off in little flakes isn't it very thin it shows you you've got you've got cold wax and uh, you're only applying light pressure yeah one of the secrets to this really is to get the wax really cold so it carves nicely so um, you can be better after, it might be better after you've added the wax just to drop in a bowl of cold water for a few minutes just to cool it right down Okay, so that's just about done on that left hand side. Just taking the tatty bits off. So 
so and you know just see the contour in there it's quite subtle you don't want to hold heat and then that would be repeated for the right hand side of the denture so once you've got the contouring uh, just about right the next thing to do is to just create the gingival margin so I use the blade and keep the blade horizontal and just cut around the necks of the teeth and this is just going to create a nice finishing edge and hopefully a nice hygienic edge as well so that there's no bits of food and so on get caught in these. You'll see this a little bit closer up in a second. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. So um, you've got to be very careful to remove all the wax off the teeth as well. I noticed in a previous podcast you discussed that you want to make sure that carding wax is a long way from these teeth and I can see you're now putting some effort into making sure they are clean. Yep, the, the carding wax at this stage would, would cause no end of problems in that it remains soft so that you um, you wouldn't be able to carve it neatly and get a nice edge. This is the cutting process again so you can see we're doing the right hand side now. So quite high on the central, a little bit lower on the lateral and then quite high exposing the neck of the tooth on the canine and then off down on the posterior teeth. I notice you're doing the whole operation with this one tool. Yeah. Um, some people have a whole line of tools, don't they, to do this, as you as you said, it can get quite finicky, but this um, the Ash 5 does have everything, everything you need for this operation. Yeah, you can start stippling the, the wax. Some people stipple the wax um, to make it uh, look a bit more lifelike. Uh, and then others will leave it until it's in, in the acrylic stage and then stipple it while it's while it's yeah. uh, in acrylic. So it's, it's worth making the denture look neat and tidy, but at the end of the day, you do need to re-grind it, don't you, once it comes out of the mould. You, you are going to be trimming it again, so... Yeah, you don't want uh, to go overboard, really. Don't go mad. It's, um, I, I like to concentrate on in between the teeth really so that I'm not going to have too much work to do once it's in the acrylic. So make sure there's nothing in there that's going to trap the plaster. Yeah, it's, it's easy to run a burr over the, the bulk of the denture but it's very difficult to run it between the teeth because you risk damaging the teeth. Don't you? Yeah, and the, the teeth have a nice um, finish on them, they're quite polished. And as soon as you grind them, it's difficult to get that same standard of finish on the teeth. So in the in on the plate aspect, then we're just smoothing out, nice and smooth. Some people on sort of private dentures try and replicate all the ridges of the the inside of the palate, but in, the, in my opinion, it just gives the patient something to fiddle with rather yeah. than. The okay, so that's about it. The same thing's done for the lower denture, as you can see. Let's take those little bits off. You can see on there the canines, the, the waxwork around the canines a lot higher. So, final little bit's taken off and we're ready for flasking. Okay, job done. Excellent.